Welcome back. Today we'll talk about public sector remedies for externalities. We'll talk about corrective taxation, subsidies, regulation. So these are the government's responses to usually in the form of negative externality response. So in the previous part, we learned about private sector solution to externalities. We learned about the cost theorem. And this is a really, really important theorem in the case of negative externalities. All the way back to the beginning of this chapter, let's focus on the definition of externalities. Externalities arise when the actions of one party make another worse off or better off, yet the first party doesn't bear the cost or receive the benefits. So we talked about uh, positive production externalities, negative production externalities. We talked about positive and negative consumption externalities. And now we are back to finding a solution to externalities. We are going to focus on public sector remedies. When we hear public sector, that's the government. Okay, so we are right here. Public sector remedies for externalities. Let's get started. So we talked about cause and solution. And we said that it's insufficient to deal with large scale externalities. So when externalities are larger scale, cause and solution doesn't work. Causing theorem has two parts. Be sure to know those. If you don't know that, go to the previous video at part five. And for large externalities such as global warming and other larger externalities that are not localized, you need public sector intervention. So public policy uses three types of remedies to address negative externalities. Number one is corrective taxation. Number two is subsidies. And number three is regulation. So I want to go back to the case about negative production externality we studied. Remember, a steel factory producing steel and a byproduct of production sludge, you know, this chemical toxic waste is released to the river and it affects the fisheries and fishermen down the stream. So for each unit of steel produced, there is a marginal damage, damage of $100 worth of fish that are being killed, right? So it's useless to the fishermen. So where is the externality? Well, it's a negative externality, comes from production of steel, and it's affecting the fishermen, and fishermen are not compensated. So what can government do in this case is that first option is corrective taxation. The government can impose what we call is Pigouvian tax, okay? So this comes from a economist, Pigou. Pigouvian tax is a kind of tax that internalizes externality or removes the effects of this externality. Government can impose a Pigouvian tax on steel firm which lowers its output and reduces the dead weight loss. Okay, so if the per unit tax is exactly equal to marginal damage, you're basically forcing the company to go to the societally optimal level, socially optimal quantity. And the firm will cut back the production. Okay, so graphically it looks like this. So I'm going to go over this graph. Y axis has the pre price of steel and x axis has the quantity of steel we have the demand for steel curve which is equal to private marginal benefit also it will be equal to social marginal benefit because externality doesn't come from the consumption side we have the blue upward sloping supply of steel supply curve which is equal to private marginal cost Social marginal cost is not equal to private marginal cost or supply curve. It is private marginal cost plus the marginal damage done to the society. So this is individual steel firms. Optimization gives you Q1. However, however socially optimal level of steel production is Q2, much lower than Q1. And the price of steel should be higher. Okay. So the steel firm initially produces at Q1 intersection of private marginal cost, private marginal benefit. Imposing tax shifts the PMC curve upward, reduces steel production. So you put supply private marginal cost plus tax, 
So it's getting closer to the socially optimal level, social marginal cost. Imposing a tax that's exactly equal to the marginal damage shifts the private marginal cost curve such that it's equal to the social marginal cost. This is called Pigouvian taxation. So we are achieving socially optimal level of production Q2. And this is also profit maximizing level. Okay. So to sum up, the Pigouvian tax shifts the private marginal cost curve. The firm cuts back on output. So this is great because whenever we have negative externality, there's overproduction. This is great, actually. The steel firm's privately optimal production will solve private marginal benefit equals private marginal cost plus tax. When the tax is exactly equal to marginal damage, this becomes private marginal benefit, private marginal cost plus marginal damage, which is social marginal cost, which is actually what we're trying to achieve. So the last equation is the one used to determine the efficient, socially efficient level of production. Okay, so in your books, you see something like this. Taxation as a solution to negative production externalities in the steel market. A tax of $100 per unit equal to the marginal damage of pollution increases the firm's private marginal cost, PMC1 to PMC2, which is exactly equal to social marginal cost. The quantity produced falls from Q1 to Q2. Price of steel is going to go up. Marginal damage is equal to the tax level. So just as with the Causian payment, this tax internalizes the externality and removes the inefficiency of negative externality. So internalizing the externality means you are, with some policy, right, achieving the socially optimal level. In the Causian solution, if the property rights were to be given to the uh, fishermen, then the company will pay fishermen $100 per still produce. So again, the marginal, their marginal cost curve would shift up just like this. Just like in this example, it would shift up. Okay. And that payment would go to fishermen. Here, government is collecting the tax and forcing, not forcing, but really it's optimal. But according to economics basics, the company, still company is move to produce q2 let's talk about subsidies subsidies are like reverse taxes government also subsidized subsidizes the agricultural sector so the government can impose a pigouvian subsidy on producers of positive externalities this will increase the producer's output so if the subsidy is exactly equal to marginal benefit at the socially optimal quantity, then the firm will increase the production to that point. So if you remember, this was the donut shop, price of donuts on the y-axis, quantity of donuts on the x-axis. So remember, the donut shop initially chooses Q1, maximizing its profits. How did it find this Q1? This is the... This is positive production externality. So demand curve, private marginal benefit, social marginal benefit, they're all equal to each other. Intersecting with the supply curve, private marginal cost, private marginal cost, private marginal benefit intersection. The donut shop is initially producing this. How is the donut shop creating positive production externality? Because the donut shop is selling lots of donuts according to the story. A police officer comes to that donut shop and actually all the crime in the area has been reduced because of police officer's presence. So donut shop's production attracting police officer, which in turn helps reduce crime in the area. Okay, so what's the socially optimal level of production? What was it? So socially optimal level of production implies that your marginal cost of production, private marginal cost, is reduced by the benefit the others are taking from the police's presence. So social marginal cost is private marginal cost minus marginal benefit. So 
This is the social, the Q2 is the social optimal level. Q1 is the private. How can we achieve Q2? How can we, we move from Q1 to Q2? So government can actually give subsidy to this donut shop minus subsidy. I'm going to put sub. Subsidy is the sub. If the subsidy is exactly equal to marginal benefit, then this supply curve will shift down. So providing a subsidy shifts the private marginal, this blue curve downward. Okay. And if you set the subsidy right, providing a subsidy exactly equal to marginal benefit shifts the private marginal cost curve down to social marginal cost curve. Okay. So the socially optimal level of donuts QT is achieved by such a subsidy. Okay, so the subsidy also shifts the private marginal cost. We are now summing everything up. The firm expands output from Q1 to Q2. This is a great thing when there's positive externality because in the case of positive externalities, they are underproduced. The donut shop's production solves private marginal benefit equals private marginal cost minus subsidy when the subsidy is exactly equal to marginal benefit to others this becomes private marginal benefit boom which is equal to social marginal cost so this is the last equation used to determine the efficient level of when i say efficient this is socially optimal Okay, so it's the same graph, something you would see in your books. I like my graph animated, right? But this is okay too. So subsidies as a solution to positive production externalities in the market for oil exploration. Interesting. So price of oil exploration. We are talking about people searching for oil. It could be hydraulic fracturing. It could be other types of exploration. Quantity of oil exploration. So private company will actually equalize private marginal cost to private marginal benefit and do this much oil exploration. Price of oil exploration is high. So government can offer a subsidy exactly equal to the marginal benefit to others because once you find an oil field, you actually are helping others to explore that oil field, especially hydraulic fracturing that we do in texas once say for instance oil shale is discovered some others can start digging and doing hydraulic fracturing and get to that shale resource okay so if you set subsidy exactly equal to marginal benefit to others you are ensuring social marginal cost equals social marginal benefit let's talk about regulation so finally, the last item that government can use to correct for externalities, the government can impose quantity regulation rather than relying on the price mechanism. So taxes and subsidies are price mechanism. Quantity regulation will be setting some quantity. So in an ideal world, Pigouvian taxation and quantity regulation give exactly the same outcomes. In practice, though, there are complications that may make taxes more effective means of addressing externalities. Okay, so taxes and subsidies are preferred. All right, so here is an example of quantity regulation. This is privately optimal level. This is socially optimal level. Okay, firm has an incentive to produce Q1. Yet the government could simply require it to produce no more than Q2. This is a negative externality example. In this case, there may be more losses in efficiency due to the fact that not knowing the shapes of the supply and demand curves. All right, folks, I will see you in part seven where we discuss price and quantity approaches to addressing externality. I know you're watching this video, why don't you hit the like button at the bottom and also subscribe to this channel because now shorter form exciting videos are coming up. I'll see you later, bye!